Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Victor notices Mickey's lack of appetite in the club. She's overly concerned about Faith. Victor informs her that neither Faith nor Lucy were gravely hurt. Nikki simply wants to meet her and complains about another vehicle accident involving underage drinking. Victor wonders if she is thinking of Faith's past accident. They're glad Adam was present to give her a kidney. Nikki is grateful that he did that. She can't help thinking about Cassie. Victor thinks they lost that girl too soon. Nikki believes this is merely a terrible reminder of what Sharon and Nick have already gone through. Victor inquires whether the presence of alcohol is causing her any distress. Nikki replies, of course. Many young people believe that drugs and alcohol can fix their problems, but they can't. Victor is appreciative for her commitment to her recovery. How worried should we be about Sharon's well-being? Nikki claims Nick believes she is grieving Cassie all over again after rebranding Cameron's company. Wouldn't it be ironic if that good gesture caused her even more pain? Faith informs her parents in the hospital that she is constantly rehearsing the accident in her thoughts. If she hadn't turned her head, Nick informs her that she was attempting to help Lucy, who was sick. Sharon snaps, from drinking. Nick asks if Faith is tender. Faith says she's well physically, but she feels guilty for allowing this to happen. Sharon sees us, you must stop that, because none of it is your fault. Faith. Nick and Faith give her a suspicious glance. Faith understands Sharon is blaming herself for the accident but she cannot protect her from awful things happening. Sharon tells her they believe her and that she was doing the right thing. Nick says she and Lucy are okay, and that's what matters. Sharon turns the topic to food. Faith doesn't have much of an appetite, but she wants to go home. Nick is unsure whether she will be released today, so he will send Maria over with her tablet. Faith suspects her mother's trip to Sedona is now canceled. She's delighted she's present. Nick tells a joke about becoming sliced liver. Faith wants to know how Lucy is doing, but Sharon snaps, you don't need to worry about Lucy. Just then, Daniel walks in and says the doctors are performing additional tests on his daughter. Sharon stares at Daniel while Faith inquires, is something wrong? Is Lucy going to be okay? Daniel believes the physicians are just being excessively cautious. He's confident she'll be all right. Sharon asks, what brings you by, Daniel? Daniel just wanted to apologize. Cameron appears and admits he has plenty to apologize for. Sharon squeezes her eyes to get him to leave. He smirks at this. Daniel informs them that Lucy's drinking caused this. Faith believes she may have caused it. I told Lucy we couldn't be friends. Daniel knows his daughter has struggled with limits. Faith believes she got drunk after rejecting her, and then contacted her since she had no one else. Daniel claims Lucy should have called him. Cameron jokes, maybe if she wanted a drinking buddy. Nick assures Faith that Daniel is correct, but Faith claims that Lucy is a child. She is the one who took her eyes off the road. Sharon yells that she is not going to sit there and let Faith take the blame for everything. Nick informs his ex that they are not blaming anybody right now. Over Sharon's shoulder, Cameron says, That's not true, is it? Sharon looks at Daniel. Devin is finishing off a phone call at Society when Lily enters. He asks her what's wrong. She claims her attempt to remove Billy from Chancellor failed miserably. Devin finds that he has fired her. Lily says that he can end her contract and just pay her off. Devin proposes that she call Jill. Lily is not going to worry her, she has stepped away to focus on her health. She worries that she overreached and pushed him too hard, too fast. Billy is sitting at Crimson Lights when Jack walks in and says, you look like hell. Billy snarks that he knows exactly what to say to make him feel better. He claims to have had a long night working. Jack wishes him well as Abbott Chancellor. Billy snaps at him, then apologizes. It's not about you, just them. Chelsea steps in with Connor. Jack observes Billy's reaction. 
Billy stands up and greets Connor, saying that it is fantastic to see him. Connor has missed him and wants to hang out. Billy admits that he has missed him too. They talk about a book Billy gave Connor that helped him feel less alone with his OCD. Billy tells him that they will make plans to hang out with Johnny. We'll make that happen. They all made Connor feel better about seeking help. Chelsea asks her kid to wait in the car. Connor asks Billy if he will see him soon. Billy responds affirmatively and... Connor hugs him. Chelsea expresses gratitude to both of them when the boy leaves. Jack moves away, and Chelsea praises Billy for standing in front of Connor. Billy would never do anything to make him more stressed. He admits he was up all night trying to figure out what would happen next. Chelsea asks if he has made any decisions. Cameron tells Sharon in the hospital that she is doing an excellent job of concealing her rage, but she needs to get Daniel out of there before she loses it. Sharon informs Daniel that Faith needs to relax. She hopes he and Heather get Lucy the assistance she requires. Daniel swears they will and assures Faith that none of this is her fault. Faith only hopes Lucy feels better. Sharon advises Faith after he leaves that she should stop apologizing. She made it plain that Lucy was neither her friend nor her problem. Faith and Nick exchange surprised glances. Nick tells Sharon they must put this behind them and move on. Cameron says, I'm sorry, partner. That will not happen. At the club, Nikki questions Victor about his next move in relation to Chancellor. He believes things are moving faster than he expected. He wants to know why Lily and Billy are arguing, and he asks Nikki to investigate. Nikki has a lot of respect for Lily, but it won't stop her from doing what she needs to do for Catherine. They dwell on the fact that she has been gone for 11 years and how much they miss her. Nikki wants to help, but she is concerned that it may not happen as quickly as Victor would like. He informs her that having more information will make it easier to get rid of them. At Crimson Lights, Billy tells Chelsea that he hasn't decided whether or not to forgive her. She will do anything to protect their friendship. I love you. Billy knows he loves her but he's not sure what that means. Chelsea says she has optimism because he is still chatting to her. Perhaps they can make their way through this. She walks out. That society, Lily blames herself for pushing Billy, who is attempting to be there for Chelsea as she supports Connor. Everything is weighing him down. Devin expects that he will now drive the company into the ground. Lily did not want this for Catherine's company. Devin wonders that he could have done more to prevent this from happening. He tells Lily that he is there for her and has her back. She knows he attempted to warn her. Devin shrugs, admitting she threw the dice and lost, but she isn't a quitter. Lily isn't sure what her next step is. Devin asks why Lily doesn't just come to work at Winters with him. Lily claims he's no better at sharing power than Billy is. She can't simply walk away. Devin doubts that she can reform Billy while also destroying him. Lily says she'll have to exploit his flaws. Devin advises her to be furious for a while before approaching the situation with new eyes. He promises she will come out on top. Pat crimson lights, Jack approaches Billy to offer assistance. Billy rejects him, but eventually admits he needs to talk. I gotta get these thoughts out of my head and try and make sense of it all. In the hospital, Nick expresses gratitude to Daniel for visiting. Cameron rages, are you kidding me? What exactly is wrong with this guy? Daniel killed Cassie and led his daughter to leech on Faith, nearly resulting in them deaths. Nick recommends to Sharon that they go out. Sharon, dazed, informs Faith that they'll be right outside. Nick teases Faith, saying he'll be back with a new load of dad jokes. Faith apologizes for scaring Sharon. Sharon claims she is fine, and that is all that matters. When Nick is alone, he asks Sharon whether she is all right. He says this is too similar to what happened to Cassie, and seeing Faith in that bed is terrifying. Cameron appears and grabs Sharon, saying, Hey, I need you to focus. Every second brings us closer to the answers we seek. Sharon exclaims, You need to stop. Nick appears alarmed. Nick apologizes to Sharon. 
Sharon claims she did not mean to snap at him. She believes Faith is correct. She feels a little guilty for encouraging Faith to go check on Lucy. Nick reminds her that she should not feel bad for encouraging their daughter to be a nice person. Cameron informs Sharon that Nick is lying and none of this is okay. He suggests that she ask Nick to give her one of those beautiful steamy kisses. Sharon loudly states that she has to go home and recuperate. She encourages Nick to do the same thing. Nick will visit Crimson Lights to buy coffee and pastries. He praises Sharon for looking out for him and promises to bring their daughter home soon. He advises her that the best thing she can do for Faith is not let this lead her down a dark path. Cameron grins. In the park, Billy informs Jack that Chelsea has slept with someone else. Jack wasn't expecting that, which explains their tension. He also noticed them taking care of one another. Billy affirms they care about each other, but admits she made a big mistake. Jack wonders if he can get over it. Billy has no idea. He only found out for sure last night. Jack believes he needs time to digest Chelsea's betrayal of his confidence. Billy claims it was one night, and she's been through hell. She expressed tremendous regret. Jack believes he has shown her a lot of grace and understanding, and a part of him wants to continue doing so. Billy claims that another detail makes the debate about forgiveness impossible. It was Adam Newman. Jack cringes. Victor sees Lily arrive at the club and says to Nikki, here's your chance. He reaches out to Lily to join them. When Lily reaches the table, Victor reveals that he has a phone call to make. He runs away and Nikki begins chatting to Lily about Catherine. She's been reading through old cards and letters from mom and would like to share one with Lily as she continues her legacy. She offers they meet up later for tea. Lily would love that. In the park, Jack observes that Billy and Adam have had a long and contentious relationship. He asks if he still loves Chelsea. Billy does, and Jane continues to adore him. Jack believes that is what this is about, not Adam. He believes that things like these might bring people closer together. He can choose whether or not to be present for the lady he loves. Sharon appreciates Nick for being such a calm and steady presence for her and Faith in the hospital. She simply hopes that this is the last time their daughter interacts with that girl. Nick is honestly more concerned about Sharon than Faith. Sharon assures him she is okay now. He leaves and Cameron tells Sharon that it is time to focus on what is real. She says, you're not real. Cameron will reveal the sorrow, loss, and hatred she hides. Sharon returns to look at Faith. Cameron reminds her that she almost lost Faith tonight just like she lost Cassie. And Lucy did that. Yeah, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? For everything you've lost, we both know who is to blame. Sharon looks at Faith asleep and notices Cassie. Thanks for watching if you liked this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.